All right, let's take an example where there is one. And you might guess which example I'm going to put up here. And the labeling is going to be different as I'm just making this up. All right. Now, calculate down from A, down from B, down from C, down from D, down from E, and down from F. If you know what you're doing, just keep working. If you're a little stuck, let's do it together. Down from A is C. Down from B is A, C, E, F. Down from C is empty. Down from D is E, C. Down from E is empty. Down from F is A, C, E. Did I do it right? Okay. Now, pick up any two of these downsets. Is it the case that one is a subset of the other? Now, subset equality is okay. A set is always a subset of itself. If you pick up any two of these downsets, is it always the case that one of them is a subset of the other? Yes? All right. So, is this post set an interval order? Answer, yes. Because it doesn't have a 2 plus 2. Ah, but again, this being an applied combinatorics class, you'd like to do more. You'd like to find an interval representation. All right. I already know there is one, but now I want to find it. Now, to do that, I'm going to calculate the upsets. I want you to do up from A, up from B, up from C, up from D, up from E, and up from F. Same thing, just turn it upside downwards. Calculate the upsets rather than the downsets. Up from A. BF, up from B, empty, up from C, A, B, D, F, up from D, empty, uh, up from E, B, D, F, up from F, B. Now, do I really need to pause to see whether or not those upsets are all ordered by inclusion? No, I already know they are. Because having a 2 plus 2 is the same as having a 2 plus 2, whether you do it this way or that way. So I really, they are. All right, now we're almost done. I want you to label the downsets from little to big. How many different ones are there? How many different downsets are there? 
different downsets. They're sets. I calculated one, two, three, four, five, six of them, but some of them are duplicates, aren't they? How many different ones are there? There's empty set, singleton C, doubleton EC, doubleton ACE, and uh, the four element set ACEF. So how many different ones are there? Five. Everybody agreed? I calculated six sets, but among them, there's five different ones. Label them from little to big, one through five. So this one is one, and that one's one. The next one is two. The next one is three. The next one is four, and the next one is five. That's labeling them from little to big with one through five. Now, look at the upsets. How many different ones are there? Once again, there are five. Label them one to five backwards. Label them one through five backwards. Take the biggest one and give it label one. What's the biggest one? C. Next biggest one? This one? Next biggest one? Next biggest one? F. Next biggest one? B and D are tied. Now, look at the interval. Look at the point A. I see an interval. Two, three. Look at the interval B. I see an interval. Five, five. Whoa. That means the left end point's the same as the right end point. I can deal with that. It's a very short period. You want to have a meeting? You got the room. No, you don't. All right. C is 1, 1. Uh, D is 3, 5. E is 1, 2. F is 4, 4. Let's draw a picture of this this way. Here is the real line. And here are the integers 1, 2, 3, and 4. So, the interval for A is 2, 3. That's the interval for A. The interval for, for B is, uh, I said, uh, I need five. The interval for B is a little one like this. this my picture is, uh, I hope, is suggestive. I, I want the left end point to be the same as the right end point, and I want them both to be five. All right. Uh, for uh, C, C is 1. D is 3, 5. E is 1, 2. And F is 4, 4. Now, even though I've got degenerate intervals in here, I have captured this post set with these things. Oh, you don't like degenerate intervals? You want all the intervals to be non-empty? Take this trick. Grab an integer and pull it like that. Pull up. Left end points this way and the right end points that way. Okay, you got more intervals. You got more integers. You got more end points. But now all the intervals are non degenerate. You want them all different end points? Oh, just feather them. Little tolerances. Just wiggle the end points. No problem. 
this representation has the quality that the number of endpoints used is the minimum. Again, here I have taken that interval order and I have represented it with five endpoints. That's the fewest you can get away with. And when you do it with the minimum, the representation is unique. Boy, that makes really good quiz material. Because everybody's answer is the same. I give you an interval order, and I ask you to carry out this algorithm to find the interval representation, and voila, you all draw exactly the same picture at the bottom. Oh, the Dilworth problem. If I have the Dilworth problem for an interval order, I start with an interval order. I find the interval representation. I write out the interval representation. And now I borrow from the stuff we studied a month ago, and I color this like it's an interval graph using first fit in the order of the left endpoints, left to right. Let's do that together. All right. Whose left endpoint comes first? Oh, there's a tie. That one, that one, and that one. All have the same left endpoint. Pick one. It doesn't matter which one. Pick one. Uh, uh, I, well, I've also lost a label. What's, on, what's the label on this last guy? One to... No, that's not a... No, I, I said three. There's only two. This is the axis. That's a question. Coordinate. I should have done my coordinate axis in a different color so I, so I could see it. I have a question about unconstructing um, interval representation. Okay. Why do we need the upsets? Because the, the, I believe the downsets have all the information we need. Absolutely no, they don't. Absolutely no, they don't. Make a bigger example and you'll see it. They're, they're on the, um, if you go in the test archive, there's lots of examples. And, and they're bigger than this one. And you have to do both of them. You know the answer as to whether it's an interval order just by calculating the downsets. But, but you need both the downsets and the upsets to get the representation question. So the sum that in the downsets, if you find any two, two one, any, any pair of um, things which are not a subset of each other, then there's a two plus two. But you won't. Because if, you, if there were, you would have found it when you were doing the downsets. When you, you don't have to test that again when you're doing the upsets. You stop after computing the downsets if you find two that neither is a subset of the other. Then it's not a two plus two. I mean, it's not an interval order, and you found your two plus two. Okay. Yeah. So you don't get to this second phase unless you already know it's an interval order, and you're just trying to rest your piece you want to find the actual representation. Okay, now, there's only two guys. Question. Um, I know this doesn't apply to minimal graphs where we use the minimal number of endpoints, but if we were to feather the endpoints, for C and E, we'd have to feather C to the left and E to the right so that they wouldn't overlap? Uh, no, 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 no. Feather the left endpoints and feather the right endpoints. So. Take these two left endpoints, you know, wiggle them a little bit. Take the right endpoint, wiggle them a little So when you move this one a little bit, it'll never go past that one. That's one away. I'm talking about a little wiggle, a little, little epsilon. Thing. So you're never going to, you're going to wiggle them in a way that they always contain the integer one. So don't wiggle them that way. All the right endpoints get wiggled that way. All the left endpoints get wiggled that way. Okay. That's a. Move like the e endpoints inward and then leave C. Yeah, move your right endpoints this way a little bit. Move your left endpoints that way a little bit. 
And now you'll make them different. But in the sense of applying first fit, it doesn't matter. You, I mean, your program will, will dictate it. How you, did you write your loop? Is it, are you going up the loop or down the loop? Or this kind of thing. So let's just do it vertically. Let's color E first. What color does E get? One. Now we color C. What color does C get? Two. Two. Now we color this one. What color does this get? No. What color does this get? Two. The least legal color that this one can have is two. It's going to have two because it doesn't overlap this two. Can't have one because it overlaps one. So the least legal color here is two. Now color this one. What does it get? What does this guy get? Okay. What does this guy get? Two. Two. Okay. Now, I've colored C, A, F, B. C, O. That's chain two. And E and D, that's chain one. Oh, and what's the width? What's the largest value that I used? Two. Find a two. Any two. Find a two. Here's a two. Now, there are two things that overlap right there. So F and D, there's your two element antigen. So moral of the story, if the boss comes down the corridor and says to you, I know you're only halfway through 3012, but I want you to solve the Dilworth problem for this 500 element post set. You should start to sweat. So the question is, are you lucky, punk? Because the only thing you know how to do at this stage is to test that post set to see if it's an interval order. If it is an interval order, you get, yes. Because now you carry out the algorithm, which we just did. You compute the downsets and the upsets, and you label them from one up to whatever. Little to big for the downsets and big to little for the upsets. You get the interval representation. You take the interval representation. You turn on first fit. First fit then colors the associated graph, but that provides a chain partition for the post set. And it finds the maximum clique in the graph, but it finds the anti-chain in the post set. And then you go proudly back to the boss and you say, here is the solution to the Dilworth problem. And the boss starts screaming at you, you use 17 chains. I wanted you to use only 15. And then you say, boss, here's a 17 element anti-chain. So no, you can't do that. And now you look golden. But what happens if you turn on your algorithm to test whether or not it's an interval order and back comes the answer, it's not an interval order, here's a 2 plus 2. Then the question as to whether or not you are lucky, you now know the answer. The answer is no. And then you have to stay in 3012 until the end of the term to figure out how to solve this problem. Okay.